Birds are known to use a variety of tactics to defend their eggs and young. For example, harsh sounding alarm calls are often given when small birds encounter a predator, and if necessary, they will also mob intruders. Although such maneuvers are not likely to injure unwelcome visitors, they will make it unprofitable for a predator to continue looking for prey, especially when their neighbors are alerted to an intruder's presence. Early detection and having help mobbing a predator are two reasons why birds that nest in open sandy beaches breed in groups. The more eyes watching for danger, the better. While adults are mobbing the intruder, Flightless chicks scramble to huddle under clumps of grass while others crouch in depressions in the sand to reduce their profile. After a threat is repelled and the adults return to the colony, the chicks must scramble again to find their parents. Mobbing, unfortunately, cannot deter all predators such as a fox or human. In such circumstances, a parent must modify its defensive tactics. For example, when walking away from a breeding colony, I came upon a skimmer flopping on the ground as if it was having trouble getting airborne. Apparently, I came too close to one of his chicks hiding in the grass. For most ground nesting birds, feigning injury is usually a last ditch effort to divert a predator's attention away from the nest or concealed offspring. Obviously, a parent's first priority is not giving away the location of its nest. In other words, when a predator is in the vicinity, avoid visiting a nest. And second, when the coast is clear, still approach one's nest with extreme caution. These are two rules strictly followed by blackneck stilts. Terrestrial predators are not likely to spot a stilt simple cup nest made of sticks and reeds. Also, the mottled dark green to brown eggs are superbly camouflaged, so much so that an untended nest is more difficult to spot than a nest with an adult sitting on eggs. Reason enough not to return to one's nest when a predator is nearby. Since female birds typically spend more time incubating the eggs than males, females are often dull colored compared to males. Not so for black-necked stilts. Both males and females incubate the eggs and both exhibit highly conspicuous black and white feathers. Along with their eye-catching appearance, stilts go out of their way to attract attention. Black-necked stilts in particular are quick to respond to potential threats. Their first line of defense is to fly over the intruder while giving alarm calls. If incessant noise doesn't drive away the threat, both sexes resort to dive bombing. And if a predator continues to approach, one of the parents will land and start frantically flapping its wings as it hops away from the nest. If the concerned parent manages to get the intruder's attention, it will periodically stop its frantic movements and crouch low in the grass as if settling on a batch of eggs, a behavior called false brooding. What it does next, however, depends upon the predator's actions. Although herons are not a threat to young killdeer raised in Badlands National Park, South Dakota, parents still have to contend with a variety of threats such as birds of prey, coyote, fox, and bison. Each type of predator, understandably, demands a different response. When a bison approaches a killdeer's nest, for example, broken wing displays are rarely performed. Instead, they lunge at the animal's face in an attempt to startle the buffalo into changing its course. When confronted with a large herbivore that consumes only grass, the real danger is having one's nest trampled. While walking along a dirt road within the park, a killdeer landed in front of me and slowly walked away as if giving a personal tour of the surrounding prairie dog town. Like stilts, it stopped periodically to crouch as if settling on a batch of eggs. When I turned and left the road, the killdeer again flew in front of me, but this time it walked back towards the road. Presumably, my off-road detour would lead me closer to the killdeer's real hidden nest. As I continued walking, the bird's calls and displays increased in frequency and intensity until it eventually flattened itself on the ground and pathetically flapped its wings and spread open its tail, an act that exposed a rufous-colored patch on its lower back. This time, its dramatic performance got my attention, and I turned back whence I came with the killdeer leading away. <laughs>